SPIE presents the Advancing the Laser series, honoring 50 years of laser achievements. I'm Anthony DiMaria. I'm Chief Scientist at Coherent Laser Division. I'm located in Bloomfield, Connecticut. I also serve as professor in residence at the University of Connecticut School of Engineering. I've been working in lasers since 1959, one year before one was actually operated by Ted Maiman, following in the footsteps of Professor Towns and his students at Columbia University. When the Ted Maiman laser, the Ruby laser, came out, I dropped what I was doing and jumped on lasers. The thing that excited me about lasers was that after reading the Shallow Towns paper, I realized that this was a device that was going to have a light beam with all the characteristics of a radio wave and microwaves and being trained as an electrical engineer and being familiar with vacuum tube amplifiers and oscillators, this was truly exciting to have such a, a device. So I started work on it and the first thing that I did that was publishable research was the acousto-optic effect to how to gate, modulate, and scan a laser beam. That was followed by the picosecond laser pulses in 1965. Uh, which uh, gave birth to what's today known as femtosecond pulses, three orders of magnitude shorter pulses than I was able to get. Coherent is the oldest um, publicly traded laser, pure laser company in the world. It was founded in 1966. Its uh, first product was a CO2 laser. Since then, it's di diverged its product line to nearly all known lasers, including fibers and, and diode pumps, solid state and diode pumps, semiconductor lasers, dye lasers, uh, ion lasers, excimer lasers, CO2, uh, argon ions, and, and so forth, um, femtosecond lasers, optical parametric amplifiers. And the goal is to, pro and is to provide lasers to original equipment manufacturers who incorporate these laser engines into their products. Coherent attitude is to keep up with the advances in lasers. As advances come into play and things get published, we either try and create them internally or license them from original inventors and enter those market into the marketplace. That keeps keeping us young. The other thing that we depend on very much is our intellectual properties. We, we, have a, we're, we have a heavy focus on patents and protecting the patents, uh, not only within the United States, but throughout the world. Um, so we depend that that's going to help us. Also, we have a huge breadth and depth to our products. We built uh, nearly every known laser that's available. And so if an application opens up that chances are we'll have a laser to supply to that customer for that particular job function. Since the laser is 50 years old, it's getting relatively mature. It's got a lot of um, development yet to be done, but I emphasize development rather than research per se, though there's still quite a bit of research. The development should be done in response to a customer's needs so that you can earn a, a, a payback on your investment. And so the ones that are most successful are the ones that are developed in conjunction with a customer. If I was to pick a laser that had the most impact on society, it'd probably be the semiconductor lasers. The semiconductor laser has revolutionized entertainment. Our video disk, data storage, telecommunications. Even though we had a bubble that burst not too long ago, the f in such a short time to have the world completely communicating by fibers under seas uh, and uh, for telecommunication is just uh, amazing when it happened and it happened so quick. And tremendous amount of bandwidth, the full impact has not been felt yet because they haven't even done wavelength division multiplexing, and, and there's still the enormous amount of bandwidth at 40 gigahertz um, capability. So the semiconductor lasers, to me, is the most important.
The other field that's been, I think, is, is second is material processing. It's probably the largest applications of lasers sold in revenues. The dial lasers sell many, many more of those, but their costs are not as high, so you have to sell a lot of them to get a comparable amount of revenue. But the material processing application is replaced saws and drills and what have you in the mechanical uh, machine tool industry and we placed it with a laser. For young people wishing to become in entrepreneurs, the best thing they can do is do it young. Be prepared for a lot of hard work and don't be dazzled just by the pure technology of it. Uh, you need a, a differentiating technology but you need to be well-versed or have members of your team who are well-versed in the finance area, the marketplace, marketing. Um, otherwise, you won't be a big success if, if, you, if it's possible to be a success without those ingredients.